Hey everybody, Dan from Sci-Fi Models and Stuff, and I wanted to tell you about this new kit that literally came in the mail about 35 minutes ago. This is the Tauntaun and Rider kit from Stan Arts. Stan Arts is a garage kit company, been around for a couple years now. Um, they're very well known for their do-back Star Wars garage kit. I've had the Stan Arts Dewback Rider on my list for several years now, and it's always been considered one of the top Star Wars garage kits ever made. So when this kit was announced, I knew I had to get it, and uh, I'd like to think that I was one of the first on the list. Overall, this looks to be a really nice sculpt, and uh, really excited to get to work on it. So let's start going through piece by piece. First up, we have the Han Solo figure that'll be riding the Tauntaun. And while his face isn't shown all that much, just about the size of a thumbnail, it's a very good likeness. And you can tell that the sculptor really took a lot of care to make sure uh, that it looked like Harrison Ford. Some of the smaller details on here are really pretty nice. Like this uh, identification badge or whatever that is there. It's very crisp. The torso is keyed so that the arms fit in pretty nicely with pretty minimal gap. And one thing that's kind of unusual is the bottom of the torso is keyed for a um, square joint, but the waist and legs is not. Not quite sure what's happening there. Um, you can see it's going to take a little bit of work to kind of get that pose figured out and fill in those gaps as well. So, kind of strange. Uh, one thing to really note here, and this kind of goes along with the whole piece, is there are no seam lines pretty much anywhere. There's one here where it'll be hidden, but none in the actual body. And not really an expert at casting resin, but it seems really incredible to get that. Along with the figure, we have uh, a little baggie here full of some 3D printed parts and accessories, which is kind of nice, nice little touch. First off, we have this um, now on camera, it probably looks a little bit like a ribbon, but up close, it is a rifle sling of some sort. And it is knitted or sewn or textile. It looks really nice. Got a few other things. These look to be uh, some sort of um, foot holder. I can't think of the word. Stirrup. Some kind of stirrup. Ah, okay. Okay. I see what's going on here. We got this belt. Let's put that to the side real quick here. A uh, few other things. We have some sort of, I don't know, radio and Hans iconic blaster. Now the print quality on these are incredible. I'm not sure what these were printed up. Probably like a Form 2 or something, but just absolutely flawless. Oh, okay, here we go. We got some teeth for the Tauntaun. More belts, more guns. Clear uh, visor. Very, very nicely done. Um, let's go back to this belt. I noticed there is a key here, so I assume... Not sure which way it goes. I assume that way. I also don't know. Maybe that way? I'm not sure what that is. So <laughs> that's that's gonna... You know what, why don't we see how it'll fit on here. Okay, it doesn't fit that way. And doesn't fit that way either. No. There we go. Okay. So it goes like that. There's a little bit of a, a tab there. So one sec. 
Okay, so that fits a little bit better. Still gonna have to do some, you know, last minute fitting and things, but then that goes like that. So, um, it'll take a little bit of work, but really cool detail overall to have that. And that also explains the, uh, the keying. Although again, I don't know why that isn't keyed to accept this. I haven't finished cleaning up the supports on that clear piece. Just needed to try that out on there. Very, very cool. Previous kits by Stanarts have been around the 1 to 12th scale. Um, I believe this might be a little bigger, maybe 1 10th or maybe 1 9th. Um, at 1 12th, the figure should be about 6 inches high, and like you said, it looks a little bit bigger than that, which is just fine. The body itself is hollow cast, which is nice to see. It really cuts down a lot on the weight and it also makes it a little bit cheaper to produce. Always like to see that. Um, again, no seam lines in any visible area, which is really great. A couple pour tabs there and there, but it shouldn't be too hard to clean up and they're kind of in uh, inconspicuous areas. Got two legs. These are solid casts, which is really nice. That gives the whole body some, uh, some mass to support it. Always like to see that. Um, looks like it'll be fairly simple fit there. It'll take a little bit to play with to get the uh, exact pose right, but the, the shape seems to have a pretty good fit. One thing uh, I'm gonna harp on, this is a little bit nitpicky, but I would have really liked to see some sort of key mark there. Um, even if it was just, you know, a divot where you could drill and a corresponding divot here to make sure things were lined up really easily. I'm gonna have to do that, um, basically drill and pin, and you would have to do it anyways, but it's nice to have a little bit of guidance. Like I said, not really a big deal, um, but you can see there's, uh, definitely a little variance with the sculpt here, so it would have been helpful. Maybe in a future run of these kits, that's something that Stan Arts can put in. The tail looks good. I wonder if there's another piece that connects it there. It looks a tad short, and actually now that I'm looking at it full length, no, no, that looks about right. Um, let me knock these off real quick, just to get a good look at the fit. <laughs> Okay, so I got those, you know, mostly taken care of. Need to be ground down a little bit more, but enough to give us an uh, idea. And that right there is a perfect fit. Um, that's really what I'm hoping for with the uh, the laid pieces. I'm hoping that uh, that's that tight of a fit. It's really good. It's going to make it easy to key uh, and really very little gap to clean up. Looking at it from a distance, that looks like the right length. So I was just mistaken there. Got these two arms that of course attach to the torso. Those look to be really pretty good. Here's one that has a much smaller pour tab on it and that fits just about perfect. So that's good to see too. One thing I am noticing, and this might be a little bit nitpicky too, but when I'm cutting these tabs off, I'm noticing that the resin is, is really quite soft. Normally you would need a razor saw or something to cut that off. And it really just kind of slices off with a mostly dull X-Acto blade. So I've had some, some issues with kits in the past where the resin wasn't cured correctly or wasn't mixed precisely and uh, gave me some problems. So I'm kind of hypersensitive to that and hopefully that won't be a uh, cause for concern here. So fit looks pretty good there. A um, little bit of a gap, but that's you know certainly what we're used to. The head is a nice touch. Uh, the bottom of the jaw here fits really nicely into the neck little bit of a gap again, but the gap is built on kind of the, the harness or bridle so that uh, that should be pretty easy. Looking at the head, the head is very accurately sculpted. It's really, really nice. This is probably the nicest part of the kit. The eyes in particular are just about perfect. So the muzzle on the head itself, there's a lower jaw. Looks pretty good. 
Um, the teeth included are very small, so, I mean, it makes sense. Now, I kind of figured it was going to be cut like that, but they'll fit in very nicely. Um, there's a tongue in there, which is kind of a nice little detail. What else? Uh, we have ears. You go here. That's an easy one to cut. Ears go like that on both sides. A really nice touch. This is um, very minor, but both of these ears have a right and left marking on them, which is a really nice touch for just a small piece. You never know. Also got these horn type things that go on the side of the face. Just cut one off right here. It's like that. Very nice. Um, those do not appear to be marked, but that's okay. You really can't screw that up. It can only go that way. So again, a really nice touch. Um, no seam line in that is good. Always glad to see that. The feet themselves are very nicely sculpted and cast. Got claws, got the nice hair detail. And one thing that's really kind of nice, which I didn't expect, is the underside is actually sculpted too. Um, a lot of times with kits like these, if the underside of the foot isn't needed, that'll just be plain. It's completely covered, so that's fine. But again, just a nice little detail. A uh, little bit of a seam line on this one. No seam line on this foot. So really nice to see. These are also marked with right and left. Lastly, we have the base itself. This is uh, kind of modeled after a snow-covered hill or something. So we got some rocks, some snow, nice details of where the feet cutouts will go. I believe that one goes there, and that one goes there. So they fit really nicely and leave some indentations. Um, with these, a lot of the weight is going to be supported on the foot, so I will likely have to drill a rod through there into the base, but since they fit so nicely, you can drill right in. Really glad to see that. Just a side note after the fact, once I clipped those poor tabs off this, I did notice that there's a little bit of a key in this, in that there's this kind of indentation here. And on the body of the Tauntaun, there's a corresponding one there too. So it fits, it locks up really pretty nicely. A little bit of a gap to deal with, but nothing out of the ordinary. This kit is priced moderately in the range of about $200. And for a garage kit, that's about the going rate for something about this size. Um, but you can really tell that the amount of detail and love that was put into this sculpt really sets it apart from other garage kits. So really, I think you're getting a really good deal at that price. I highly recommend checking them out on Etsy, seeing the other kits they produce as well. They all look to be really good. Overall, I would rate this kit about a 10 out of 10. Uh, going by the level of detail, the quality of the casting, the 3D parts, and the subject matter. The small issues that I pointed out are relatively minor and something that you really expect uh, when dealing with garage kits. Now, compared to garage kits of the last 20 years or so, these problems are non-existent. This is just coming from someone who's, you know, frankly kind of spoiled on modern garage kits with nice king and 3D printed parts and stuff. So um, there is no reason why you should not get this kit. Uh, really, really excited to start working on this. All right, everybody. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to check us out on Instagram where I will be eventually showing build pictures of this kit. And um, we'll see you next time.